Hello there. I'm the Dragonator, and I like fairy tales. So, 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 who's ready for part two? Part two, part two, part two. I mean, I hope you're ready for part two. You clicked on this video, right? We will be going back to the stories of King Arthur. And when we last left off, King Uther had passed. But Arthur didn't know that he was king yet. So, without further ado, let's see how he figured out that he became the king of the Britons. Arthur was still young when his true father, King Uther Pendragon, passed. He was skilled in the art of sword play due to his training to be a knight, but he was still a young boy. As a result, when the people surrounding Uther heard that Arthur was going to be king, they didn't believe him. He was no prince. He was just a beardless poor boy. Only Uther and Merlin knew the true origins of Arthur, but the people had to be convinced. To set up who the next king would be, a magical boulder with a sword stabbed in the middle of it appeared. Merlin told the people that whoever would be able to take the sword out of the stone would be the next king of the Britons. People all over the country, from the strong to the brave, to the best in leadership, tried to take the sword out of the stone, and they all failed. Because of the shifted power not being realized, the morale of the people lowered tremendously. Therefore, some people decided to have a fun jousting contest to take a break from the uncertain times. I mean, what else could you do during that time? Sir Kay, son of Sir Ector, forgot to get his sword from his house. As Arthur's foster brother, he decided, since he wasn't going to participate anyway, he would get Sir Kay's sword. Unfortunately, the house was locked. He didn't want to go back and ask for the key, so he decided to try the sword in the stone. Couldn't have been that strong, right? Well, it was so easy. He was shocked that obviously stronger people couldn't get the sword. At first, Sir Kay said he would be king. But Arthur told the truth of what happened. The family put the sword back in the stone, and when all the family tried to put the sword back out, Arthur was still the only one able to get the sword. The family and Merlin told him the truth about his origins, and all over the country, Arthur proved that he was to be king. A lot of important figures still couldn't believe it. They delayed his coronation over and over and over and over until the middle of spring. Finally, he was crowned King of the Britons. That didn't stop many of those important figures from wanting to commit treason. Arthur looked at the sword he had, and he said he needed a new sword. One that would strike fear in the hearts of his enemies. Merlin had an idea. Arthur followed Merlin to a lake, and in the middle was a woman clothed in white. She was the Lady of the Lake. She held the sword for Arthur and she asked for something in return at a later date. This sword would be later known as Excalibur. Not all the kings in the area were against King Arthur. To help fight back against those who would commit treason, Arthur was able to recruit those kings to his cause, who recruited their own men to help King Arthur's men. The battle was fierce and Arthur, filled with rage, didn't want it to end, but Merlin told him when it was enough. Then the allied kings and Merlin went to see a hermit named Blaise. Blaise? Blaise? Blaise, who helped heal any wounds he had. He was able to record this battle and all of the battles thereafter. I hope that you're enjoying King Arthur's story so far. I had a really good time trying to figure out what kind of painting I wanted to do for this one. I think I'll keep it going next month and maybe August, but I do have a surprise in September. Either way, stay safe and have a very good rest of your day. Bye!